Let's bring Kraken Penny in. Uh, who, uh, wow, this is uh, quite the machine that you have here. Tell us more about it and tell us more about your team. Yeah, so this is the robot we've built for the Robot in 30 Hours Challenge. So we have on the front a deployable active intake. So at the beginning of the match, we can move the robot and that'll deploy down. Uh, it has active intake wheels on the front of it along with throughout the robot to carry it through. Uh, and it sticks forward of the wide profile of the robot to give us a nice narrow intake pattern for picking up the pixels. Um, it moves through back to a little transfer basket back here, uh, at which point our claw can grab on either side of it to pick up the pixels. So we actually have a two claw mechanism that allows us to grab each individual pixel with different claws. So that allows us to release the two pixels individually. This video on fun is made possible by viewers like you and also the following. The new Robit system by Anymark can reduce complexity and enable robust builds. Parts align to a common one half inch grid, simplifying construction and allowing alignment of both structure and motion components. Robits enables teams to always have the parts they need to complete a build. Head on over to Anymark.com slash Robits to learn more in order today. Um, and then after we bring it up, the claw can pivot up and we can independently let go of the pixels and drop them in different places depending on where we want to either score them to get extra height bonus or to make a mosaic. So in addition to everything that you just seen right now, we also have a lift mechanism to lift up our robot up, up, up upon the truss. So as you see on right now, on the right side of the robot, we have this swinging arm mechanism that when it goes all the way to the top, it swings forward up and around. That way it's able to reach onto the truss all the way up. City, all the way up. and lift itself up. And currently, right now, we only had enough parts to make one half of it because we originally planned to have one on each side. But for now, we're working with one half of it. All the way down. Drop, drop, drop. It just pick, just pick buttons. Up, up. Yes. So as that's going along, can you talk to me a little more about the transfer process? You can still score and stuff, but I'd just love to hear more about how that yeah. transfer process so works. So right now, um, you can see there they actually have grabbed two, and you can see that right here because there is an inner and outer claw. So they're going to drop the outer one. Left, left, left. You're going to see that right now. And then we can drop the second one, so we can actually manipulate two at a time, pending the, the, the not bumping in the wall. Um, but that uh, we think is a really important element of the game because the rules allow us to pick up two at a time and therefore by doing that we can save time in going across the field to grab the game elements um, from the depot. So you can see right now we're having a little bit of sticking but 
I think something you guys just showed uh, a little bit before, too, where uh, you yeah. did knock off some of the pixels on this, something teams should be really aware of, right, as we go through. This is something done in 30 hours, but teams, as you're looking at completing and competing in the center stage challenge, you have to be really careful with how you hit the uh, backdrop, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so yeah, so we did a little bit of testing with this earlier, and you can find that video on first updates now. But um, it's definitely easy – easier the higher you go to knock off um, the pixels. And so you have to be, teams have to be really, really mindful of that. Um, and as you can see, we just had one little jerk of the robot and we knocked a bunch of them off. Um, so that's really important. But we think that, um, you know, with a little practice and also the angle of our slides matches the angle of the backdrop, then that allows us to hopefully reduce um, us hitting that. Yeah. And so we're gonna go score again. Hopefully not knock any over this time. Let right. There you go. So there you How go. about from your drone? What are you looking at doing uh, from that perspective? Uh, so as of right now, our drone launcher isn't on our robot right now. But we plan on implementing it towards the front. That way it's able to face where the outtake is facing the, the, our front of the robot. That way it's able to go up and over the truss and out of the field, field into the scoring area. And that uses a rubber band. So. Uh, we'll, we'll have time to maybe get to one or two questions. Is there anything else on your robot you want to highlight or talk about at all? Um, I think we got most of it, just that, yeah. All right, let's grab, uh, we can grab two questions and uh, we'll grab the rest offline uh, for crack competing to answer. All right, question one is from Not Paid Guitarist Gamer. What does your auto look like and what do you use for coding? So, um, for that, right now, we don't have any dead wheels or anything on the robot. So what we're planning for auto is um, we we actually made an open CV pipeline to detect the location of um, our randomization element on the tape. So we plan to use that and to push one of the purple pixels onto the um, onto the tape that corresponds with it, and then park, which uh, without dead wheels in the backstage. Yeah, yeah. So that's what we hope to do for now. And um, yeah, in the future, we hope to, with the precision of dead wheels, be able to navigate to the backdrop and be able to deposit the yellow pixel and the purple pixel with high precision. And then Liam Fitzsimmons has another question. Do you guys have a solution for the second pixel not reaching the board? Um, the second pixel pixel uh, should be able to reach the board. When we demonstrated that, we actually, we just knocked it off. It, 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 did, it did land on the board. Yeah, we didn't um, we need more practice, as always comes with it. But um, you can see if you just want to extend that claw one more time, um, real quick, that uh, that that with no, the two, <laughs> that with um those two claws, they they're at the same um like lateral distance there. So we just can release one and then the other, and they both can reach because they're about the same place. So that actually shouldn't be a problem with enough practice. Um, we're gonna try to demonstrate it here uh for you right now. Slowly. Yeah. Yep. So you can see there, we, we just deposited both at the same time there. Um, and that's able to, again, make use of that basket, which can hold two, the maximum allowed, and get the most points. Well, possible. that's the first two we've seen in a full cycle so far. I think that deserves a huge round of applause from our audience uh, for accomplishing that. Nicely done. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in first scholarship. Scholarship applications will open in September. Get ready to go pro and get more information at kettering.edu first. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.